Oh, uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, social media and art and, you know, painting and posting and, 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 and that stuff. Welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I answer your questions on oil painting. So if you have a question that you want answered, leave in the comments section of this video and I just might answer it on next week's Paint Talk. If you're new to the channel, my name is Chris Fornatero and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so you can get better, faster. Now, if you're actually looking for full painting video tutorials, I do have those, but they are on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. Also, if you don't know what kind of materials you should be using, I put links in the descriptions of all my videos to the materials that I suggest for beginner painters. And lastly, if you like this video, if you like this channel, please hit the subscribe button right now. Hit the like button right now. It really helps the channel grow, which helps me produce better videos for you. All right, so normally I answer a bunch of questions in these paint talks, but I got a question this week that I knew would take up the entire paint talk, so I'm just gonna be answering one big question this week, and that is, social media. All right, so the, the question actually came from Monica A. Lefebvre. It says, I just started my YouTube channel and the videos obviously only get a couple of hundred views. If that, what tips do you have to increase engagement? Also, Instagram, if you will. That's a lot to talk about, so let's jump on into it. All right, so right off the bat, I'm just gonna say, I don't have a ton of social media followers. You know, I'm not one of these people that has like 100,000 YouTube subscribers or 50,000 plus uh, subscribers on Instagram. So, you know, I'm in the process of growing myself and maybe getting some advice from one of these artists that have 100,000 followers might be better than my advice. Uh, if there are any out there that have a ton of followers and see this video, please comment in the comment section with some tips. All right, first off, so I just wanna talk about big general things to know. Uh, first off, worry about being really good first. Always be thinking about how you can get better. Always be looking to improve yourself, um, whether that's, you know, online courses, whether that's workshops, uh, figure drawing classes, anything that you can. So while you're like doing all this social media stuff, never forget that you have to be good. And if you're not good, work to get good. Now, another thing is being consistent you probably heard this a lot but it is very true and it takes time i see so many people are here about so many people oh i tried the social media thing i did a couple posts and you know nothing really happened no one came and bought all my work and it's like that's not how it works you know the consistency thing it's not just about getting your work out there on a consistent basis it's, it's about you consistently getting better at using social media that's the thing that a lot of people don't talk about it's you know it does help constantly getting your work out there and reaching new people and getting a wider audience but it's even more helpful i think to for you to get the practice at utilizing social media and getting better at posting getting better at making videos getting better at understanding what's going to work you know understanding how to do time lapse videos how to you know edit videos and cut down cut a little 45 second video to put on instagram you know make a small video to put on tiktok i'll get to tiktok in a second i'm gonna get to tiktok but just the more you post the more consistent it's like anything else in life you're gonna get better at it now another thing that's brought up a lot is a lot of artists worry about social media dictating what they paint now, I understand that, and you shouldn't just let it completely dictate what you paint. You shouldn't be painting stuff you don't want to paint just to post on Instagram. But I think it's very important to pay attention to what is working. What type of work that you do, that you like to do, is getting the most attention and doing the best on social media. Now, this is not like a new concept or thing. Like, this is what people do when they put their work in galleries. You know, you put a bunch of your pieces in a gallery, certain pieces sell, a lot of times it's a certain type of piece. It's like, oh, whenever I do my beach landscapes, those always sell, my cityscapes don't. So what is that artist gonna do? Next time they're gonna do a lot more beach skate, you know, beach scenes. So it's not like selling out like a lot of artists, oh, it's so no, you know, but paying attention to what people are responding to can help you dial in what your audience wants. Now, a perfect example of this is Jennifer Gennari. 
think I'm saying her name right. She's a very great oil painter out of New York. She's had her stuff in a lot of galleries. She did a lot of figurative work. And then she did some animal paintings a few years ago on Instagram and they got, you know, they blew up and they got really popular. And I saw her content and her post and what she painted slowly get dialed in to be more and more specific. And animal portraits in pretty much 95% of her content now and what she posts is just her paintings of pets. And she got known as you know, the artist that's really, really good at painting pets. It seems like she has endless pet commissions. She released a uh, video tutorial on how she paints uh, a dog. You know, a lot's come for that. Now, this doesn't mean that in her free time, she's not still doing figurative work. All right, so now I want to get a little more in specific with each, like, kind of individual platform. I'll start with Instagram. First thing you should know about Instagram is that its organic growth is pretty much dead. Uh, they've changed the algorithm around so much that it's virtually impossible to grow a lot organically they want you to pay for their ads and stuff which i don't recommend doing don't pay for ads a lot of the artists out there that do have you know fifty thousand hundred thousand you know all these crazy uh amount of followers a lot of them did get that back when kind of the getting was good with with instagram and the algorithm and organic growth and all of that uh so just be aware of that that growing on Instagram isn't what it used to be, but it's still a great, you know, platform. It's a great way to showcase your work. Now, if you have a YouTube channel, um, it's good to funnel people from that YouTube channel to your Instagram. That's actually how I feel I get most of my new followers is people see my content on YouTube and that funnels them to uh, my Instagram. Now, the thing to think about when posting to Instagram is as much like behind the scenes stuff as you can. I feel like a lot of people like that, uh, gaining as much access to your process is always good you know people like to see how it's made that's one of the best things about social media is the level of access that it gives uh to people and the whole thought of like kind of of not showing your process or trying to build like a mystique or anything like that on instagram is not the way to go i feel i feel like it's, it's to let people in as much as possible so you know doing time lapses of your work a lot of phones you know iphones they have the time lapse option just do a basic uh time lapse of your paintings uh if you have a camera and can edit video you know cutting together and editing a video uh you can do in progress photos you know post something that has a bunch of different photos of the progress uh, of your painting i you know i really like to see that you know think about like what you would like to see you know you follow painters that you look up to you know what do you would you like to see from them would you like to see them in the middle of the painting painting would you like to see them live stream uh, a painting you know see their progress photos think of it that way i always think about myself and everything that i post and thinking about like what would i want you know what would i want to see i feel like if you go that route and thinking about what you want you'll make better quality posts and offer more value i feel like a lot of people just mindlessly post and they're just like oh i did a painting let me post it oh content 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 and they're not thinking about the value of that content i'm always trying to think about offering as much value as i can with every post that i do whether it's on youtube instagram whatever this also goes with the descriptions on your posts on instagram don't just phone in this copy you know think about you know, offer value every chance that you have offer value in some form you know if you're just if you're posting a painting just to post it and your kind of goal is to sell the work or sell prints just straight up sell it you're not trying to you know educate people you know talk about the painting talk about you know where the idea came from where did the photo reference come come from why did you paint it what did you find hard about it what do you like about it what do you not like about it you know just give information people like as much information as possible and as much value as possible now some things to try Try and jumpstart and get uh, more followers is doing paintings for free with other people that have a lot of followers whose followers were, will overlap with people that would like to follow your stuff. So if you find somebody who you think their followers would really like, you know, to see paintings, uh, you can do a, a painting for that person or of that person or that account or whatever and say, hey, I did this painting. Do you mind reposting it? I can send it to you for free, blah, blah, blah. You know, you can go that way. You got to get creative, you know. There's no set way to do this stuff, but like you wouldn't want to contact a person that just, you know, shows pictures of food and they're a cook and like, Hey, you repost my painting. You know, that's not, there's not an overlap there. And also look at somebody's account and see if you, one of your paintings would fit in to 
the stuff that they post, like the look of it, you know, the feel, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people that have a ton of followers on Instagram have a ton of followers because they're consistent with what they post and they have to deliver a certain type of thing with every post to their followers. And if you're painting your style, whatever, like doesn't really fit with that, you know, don't see, be surprised if they don't get back to you or, you know, aren't willing to agree to post your stuff. All right, now I'm going to move onto YouTube. Now I feel like there's kind of two avenues people go with with YouTube in terms of painting. One is to sell their work or to sell prints. So they'll post videos of themselves painting. Kind of the end goal is to get more awareness about their work so people go to their site and buy their prints or you know actually want to buy the work. There's a lot of people that do that and are very successful at that. The other way is kind of like what I do, which is the educational side. Now again, I don't have an insane amount of subscribers. I got like 13,000 subscribers. The thing with YouTube you need to know is that it takes takes time. Uh, you know, I've been at this for two years plus posting videos, posting, you know, at least one video every week for two years. And again, like Instagram, it's not just about constantly getting your content and getting more content out there. It's also uh, getting better at producing that content. So be honest with yourself in terms of how good your videos are, uh, where you can improve. I'm constantly trying to make a better video than I did the week before. I'm paying attention to what people are saying in the comments on what they like, uh, what they don't like, what videos do well, what videos don't do well, uh, what thumbnails are working, what aren't working. You know, my way of explaining things. You know, again, it's all about offering value to the people. I wanna offer as much value to the people watching my content as possible. And if that means I need to change up how I'm presenting something or how I'm explaining something, if there's a better way that I can get across my point on, what it, what, on whatever it is that I am trying uh, to teach, I'm going to do that. And over time, I have changed up you know, what my videos look like, the format, the length, you know, the music. I've upgraded my equipment to, you know, have better quality sound, a better quality image. I'm just constantly trying to get better. You know, again, consistency is good, but you need to consistently be getting better as well. All right, now Facebook, I honestly don't use Facebook that much. I kind of just got it linked up to my Instagram account, so anything that I post on Instagram will go to my Facebook. Now, I don't want to make anybody feel old or anything, but... I just know a lot of people my age, pretty much anybody under the age of 35 doesn't really use Facebook that much, which is gonna lead me into my next topic of talking about TikTok. Now, if you don't know what TikTok is, look it up. Like, oh, TikTok, that's for like college kids. It's like, yeah, now, but you gotta understand, that's exactly what people were saying about Instagram in 2011. But you know, if I was paint posting my paintings as much in 2011 as I am now, I would probably have 50,000 followers. So the reason TikTok is great right now is because it's very easy to grow organically, uh, meaning it's very easy for people to find your stuff and for you to grow unlike Instagram right now. A lot of people say, oh, what if TikTok doesn't become the next Instagram? What if it's like Vine and it just kind of comes and goes? That might be, that's probably what will happen. But the thing is, if you do start making TikTok content, you're gonna know how to make content in that form. Because even if TikTok dies out, something will come along to replace it that is very similar to it. And if you had been posting a bunch of TikTok videos, you're gonna have a lot of experience and be a lot better at posting that style of content that you can transfer over to whatever comes next. This happened with Snapchat. A lot of people thought Snapchat was gonna be the next big thing and they started posting content for Snapchat and Snapchat kind of died off because of Instagram stories. But that doesn't mean it was completely worthless to be posting Snapchat content because those people got better at posting those short videos for Snapchat and that skill set they got transferred over to Instagram stories. Because make no mistake, like something will come along that will replace Instagram and be bigger than Instagram. It will happen. All right, that's it for this week's Paint Talk. I could probably go on and on and on about social media, but it's all the time we got for today. Again, if you have a question, leave it in the comments section. I just might answer it on next week's Paint Talk. If you're looking for the full video painting tutorials, I have those on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. If you want to follow me on Instagram, see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can at fours of 43. I am Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Whoa, you're still here. You made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like it. In that case, you should hit the subscribe button. You'd also probably like this video too and this video. 
Please pick one. All right, this is getting awkward. <laughs> 